Hey everyone, in this week's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to more accurately control the driving of your FLL robot using the EV3 gyro sensor and a gyro following program. So first things first, what exactly is gyro following? Gyro following is a program that I'm going to teach you how to make today in EV3G. And what it does is it uses the EV3 gyro and with this program you can set a heading or an angle for your robot to travel at and a desired speed that you would like the robot to travel in that direction in and what the gyro program does is it will keep your robot at this angle on this track like let's say you set it to 25 degrees and it uses proportional logic to keep the robot on track so it's going to turn to that direction that you've set and it's going to stay on track using proportional logic which I've explained about 7,000 times in other videos so I won't talk about that now but uh, as a result it's a very precise way to keep your FLO robot driving in the direction that you'd like and the two inputs for this program are the desired heading or angle that you would like the robot to drive in and the speed at which you would like the robot to drive at and I'll show you how to build this program in just a second before going any further in this video, I must first issue a disclaimer. I'm not responsible for creating this software. Credit for the creation of the software goes to FLL team number 27, Republic of Pi, and their coach, Patrick. They were the ones who actually created the software, and they shared it with me, and they graciously granted me permission to make a video tutorial on it so I could share it with you guys. At this point in the video, if you haven't already seen my previous video from last week, which is how to make your EV3 gyro more accurate, I highly recommend you go watch that before we move on with the video because that's going to help you make your gyro sensor more reliable so the program that we're making now will be more meaningful and more useful for your FLL robot. Now it's time for me to show you how to build the gyro following code. First, what we're going to want to do is take out a loop block and add that to our program. The next thing to do is take out, of course, a gyro block because we're going to want that if we're doing gyro following. We want it set to angle. Next we're going to take out a move tank block just like this. Set it to on. We're not going to do anything with the power yet but make sure you've selected your drive motors which should be B and C. And then lastly, in between these two blocks that we've added, we're going to add in three math blocks, which I know seems like a lot, but you guys like math, right? The next thing to do is to set whether or not we're adding or subtracting with these math blocks. The first one and the last one are going to subtract, whereas the middle one is simply going to add. What we're going to do now is take the angle for our gyro sensor, like this, the angle output, and plug that in as A in the first math block, just as I'm showing here. The next step is going to be taking the result of this first math block and plug it in as B of the next two math blocks in the series here. So of the first math block and now of the second math block. The final thing we're going to do is for this first math block we're going to take the, I'm sorry this is the second math block, we're going to take the result of this and plug it in as the power of our right motor and then we're going to take the result of this math block and plug it in as the power of our left motor just like this. So here we've assembled the fundamental skeleton of the gyro following program and it's quite simple and elegant in the sense that it doesn't have too much going on I mean yeah there's a lot of math but it does something pretty nicely with just a few blocks. The next thing that we need to do is set our values what would we like it to do and right now it's not going to do a heck of a lot and I'll show you why. Our two pieces of information that we're going to want to input is our robot's desired speed and the robot's heading, what direction we want it to travel in. So for heading, what we're going to do is the B value of this math block here, you're going to set that as the target heading of your robot. So if you wanted your robot to drive at say 35 degrees, you would type in 35 and whatever 35 is relative to the gyro zero position it would travel in the 35 de degree direction or conversely you can also put it as zero if you want it to just travel straight ahead from its starting point for now I'll put 35 
For the next part, we're going to enter in what power we want the robot to drive at. Now, of course, it's not going to be exactly the power that we type in. The robot's going to modulate the power between the left and right a little bit, uh, increasing the speed on one wheel and decreasing the, on, the, on the other in order to keep the robot on our desired track, but we can set the starting power that we want. So let's say you want your power to be 75%, you're going to type in the power value that we want as the A value in each of these math blocks. So this becomes 75 and this also becomes 75. It's important to type in the same amount of power for both math blocks if you want to drive straight. If you want to play around with the settings and give each one different power then go right ahead. It'll affect the functioning of the program. But for now I'm just showing you this. So now this is our completed program. What the robot's going to do once we start the program is it's going to rotate itself in the 35 degree direction, drive at approximately 75% power, and keep itself in a straight line, driving at 30, a 35 degree angle for the entire duration of the program. And you're going to want to change this loop block so you can break out of it somehow, but I've explained how to do that in previous videos, and that's going to depend on whatever case that you'd like. So anyway, here is the completed gyro following program. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.